Hello everyone. You may have heard many times the phrase, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. There was a story several years ago when computer translation programs were first being developed. The phrase, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak was fed into a program to be translated into Russian. What came out in Russian was the wine is good but the meat is rotten. Similarly, there is every possibility of misunderstanding and misinterpreting St. Paul's explanations of being in the flesh and being in the spirit. I think if these words flesh and spirit are not explained well to us in the context of our faith, many of us could miss the point. Friends, the Catholic Bible has 73 books, 46 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. 14 of the 27 books or letters in the New Testament are believed to have been written by Paul to individuals and communities. In each of these letters, he expounds instructions on Christian living or virtues specific to Christians. I believe it is very necessary for both scholars and ordinary faithful to study in detail the writings of Paul for a deeper understanding of Christian faith. One of the texts worth reflecting is today's second reading from his letter to the Roman Christians. The text begins with Paul revealing the purpose of Christian life and a sad truth. He says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. First, Paul reminds the Roman Christians that the purpose of their Christian life is to please God. How can they please God? They can please God by living according to his revealed will. But sadly, Paul says that those who are in the flesh cannot please God. What does he mean by being in the flesh? Flesh here does not refer to the body. Paul does not in any way despise the body. Being in the flesh refers to the nature of a person being dominated by self or self-desires which are destructive. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh as opposed to those of the spirit. For instance, a person who is greedy for riches is most likely to spend all his time planning to take away or destroy what belongs to others. So Paul says that those who are living in the flesh, that is, those whose thoughts, attitudes, words, deeds and purposes are controlled by their flesh or unable to please God. Even their best works will never be seen by God as works for God's glory if they have been produced for selfish or self-centered reasons. Then Paul says, But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. What does he mean by being in the Spirit? Spirit here refers to the soul. Being in the Spirit refers to the nature of a person who is governed by the Spirit, which is life-giving. Those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit as opposed to those of the flesh. For instance, a person who is earning for peace, joy and love is most likely to direct all his attention and energy to obtaining true peace, joy and love. However, Paul believes that they are in the Spirit if only they allow the Spirit of God to dwell in them. And then Paul warns them that 
Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Here, the spirit of God and the spirit of Christ are the same. John in his gospel writes that the spirit proceeds equally from the Father and from the Son. So, Paul says that those who lose the spirit of Christ can no longer belong to him. It means that it is possible for the Christians to lose the spirit of Christ whom they have received in baptism. How can they lose the spirit of Christ? They can lose the spirit of Christ by committing mortal sins. What is mortal sin? Mortal sin is called mortal because it brings about the spiritual death of the soul or the separation from God. Mortal sin is a serious sin committed willfully and with full knowledge and consent of the sinner. For example, idolatry, adultery, murder, slander, stealing and defrauding. These are all things gravely contrary to the commandments of God. Then he says, But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. What does he mean? Paul says that if the spirit of God or spirit of Christ is in them, even though their bodies are dead because of sin, the spirit, that is, the soul, is alive because of the grace and righteousness of God. Finally, Paul says, If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. Paul tells them that all those who have the spirit of God in them do not only enjoy the life of grace and peace for their souls, but they shall also have their mortal bodies gloriously raised from the dead on the last day. Because the resurrection of Jesus and that of all the dead is made possible by the power of God the Father. Friends, Paul's message is very simple. 1. Paul wants us to continually discover and do what pleases God. Pleasing God is and should be our goal. How can we do this? The first step is in pleasing God is to seek God by faith in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Second, we shall always walk in the Spirit. Let our thoughts, words and actions be true, honorable and right and pure. Third, we shall make ourselves worthy of our calling by obeying and submitting to the will of God. These things may seem impossible to carry out, but God wants us to please Him, and He makes it possible for us to please Him by the power of His Spirit who lives in our hearts. 2. Paul reminds us of the contrast between the life of the flesh and the life of the Spirit. We can choose to live life dominated by our selfish desires and activities that lead us to fear, anxiety, restlessness, distress and death, or to live life governed by the teachings of Christ that lead us to contentment, inner calm, peace and life. 3. We ought to exercise self-control not only in our physical appetites, what to eat and what not to eat to keep ourselves healthy, but also in our thoughts, words and actions, which causes spiritual blindness. 
to lose the focus on the ways of God is to fall prey to the devil. There are always many evil people around us to defeat us spiritually. We must beware of those who try to take us away from the God-centered life and lead us into a worldly and forbidden life of selfishness, lust, hatred and rebellion against God. 4. The Spirit of God is the source of all that pleases God in man. Let us constantly renew our faith by humbly admitting our sins and asking the Lord to fill us with His Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.